Welcome back to Escapement and Watch Falling Titan here. Today we're thanking Kavar Jewelers for lending this into the channel. And if you want to purchase this watch, let Kavar Jewelers know that I sent you and I'm sure you'll be satisfied. Now let's check out the unboxing experience. Simple Seiko box, a little bit more special than the regular Seiko boxes. And why is that? Because it's the patty look at that got the patty box and this is a fan favorite the first mm200 okay the box is off to the side now let's begin introducing the discontinued seiko spb 087 patty edition look at that this one a fan favorite the first gen mm200 and it is a special edition. You can see it on the case back. On top of that wave, it says special edition. All right, that's how you know Seiko produced this watch for one year only, and now it is completed. So they're not making any more of them. However, whatever's in stock still is available. So the history on this model, it doesn't really have history. However, it does remind us of the 6215 from 1967, Seiko's first dive watch with the crown at four. So a very important moment in history. This is what started the iconic Seiko dive watch four o'clock crown look. It has become such an important feature of Seiko divers. And when I think four o'clock crown, I think Seiko dive watch. What do you guys think? Now, dimensions it is very similar to that vintage watch. So it's like you're buying a vintage watch in modern times. Now we got a measurement of 44 millimeters in diameter. The original is 43.5. Thickness of 12.9 and a lug to lug of 50 millimeters. And the original, very close to those numbers. Now the crown is nice and big at seven millimeters, easy to operate and easy to use. Perfect for this size of watch. Now the patty comes on this beautiful rubber strap, accordion style or silicone strap, sorry. We have the wave at the tip and a nice Seiko signed buckle and retainer. The bezel and bezel insert. We have aluminum insert, my favorite material. It just has such a vivid color. You cannot really compete with aluminum. And of course it patinas amazingly. You know when it looks ghosted and faded, that is just pure joy. And the feel, beautifully dampened, very good resistance. It feels very high quality. It's a well done bezel, coin edge, easy to grip, even with these gloves, no problems, sounds amazing. Just a smooth, nice rotation. There, got it. The sapphire crystal here does have anti-reflective coating and it is flat and it is white AR, thankfully, no blue AR, so we see that pure black dial in all its glory. Sometimes that blue AR changes the color or hue of black dials. Now, speaking of that dial, it is a beautiful matte black and that white Seiko and Patty text, beautiful high contrast. We have the Pro Specs X under the Seiko logo and we have those sword and board hands what is a board? It's a shield. It's a little bit of a slang. This style has the Marine Master style of indices. They are pressed. They do look applied. They have high polished surrounds, a nice taper at nine and six o'clock for those indices. Round everywhere else, we got the shield at 12, date window at three o'clock. All right, and it's not color matched date disc. And that beautiful red seconds hand is stunning. It's a nice dark rich red we got the loom pip at the counterbalance. Now the chapter ring is a separate piece. There you can see it. It lays on top of the dial in between that sapphire. Now the new MMR does have it printed on the dial. 
and the chapter ring is just a metal rehot. So when we look at the case shapes, they are very different. This one does have that high polished flank or shoulder that goes all the way across. It is a huge wedge shape. So this disappears on the wrist because of that high polished, huge shoulder blade. Now, when we look at the secret measurement of this watch, what is the secret measurement? The measurement of that bezel, what our eye sees. And we just see all bezel here, 40.5 millimeter. Secret measurement here, 40.3 millimeter. So when we line it up right there, there is the size. What do you guys think visually on the wrist? They're gonna wear very similar, even though they are a couple mils apart. There we go. Which one is your favorite? The Marine Master 200 or the Reduced? Let me know down in the comments. The price on this one? 900 USD, a very affordable price. Nowadays with everything rising, watches have slowly crept up, all brands, not just Seiko. And here you can still get high quality dive watch with some vintage DNA styling of that 6215 for a great price. Basically a discounted 6215. I can't put it on because there is a sticker covering the buckle, but here it is on my 6.5 inch wrist. The lugs do look a little bit fat and thick, so it wears small. The only giveaway is that thick brushing on the top of the lugs. That is the only giveaway. And it does wear nice and sleek. It has a really slim, even though it's 12.9, it's very slim. It is deceivingly slim. It has that squat, squat stature on that case. So definitely I can pull it off. I do feel like it's a tad big for me, but I used to own one of these, the 5.3, and I really enjoyed it. Let's check out the weight. I'll try to keep most of the tags off. We got the patty tag off. Okay, 116, very nice, almost 100 grams, some lightweight comfort. This thing, you're gonna wear it all day and you're not gonna feel it. Okay, so we have the fully in-house 6R15, a movement not seen much anymore. Been replaced by the 6R35. So this one, 21.6 VPH, 50 hours of power reserve, 24 joules hack, hand wine, automatic, completely in-house, 0, 0.0 milliseconds in B air, zero seconds a day, 265 amplitude, these are great numbers. I'm impressed. We do have a lot of snowflakes though. I, it could be just my voice. Let me stop talking for a little bit. Ooh, it's cleaning up nicely. Zero, one, zero, zero. Let's do three more rounds, guys. Zero. Oh man, so the amplitude is a little bit low, but look at those zeros and look at the beat error. Wow. And it's definitely cleaning up. It was probably my voice it was picking up. Which is strange because it usually doesn't pick up my voice. So now we have two snowflakes. All oh, right, eight rounds, perfect score. Eight, 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 eight. I mean, zero, 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 zero. <laughs> I don't know why I said eight, eight, eight. Let's see the positional accuracy of the six R15. All right, it did perfect on dial up. Zero seconds a day average. And let's check 12 down. The position your watch is in the most during the day. Okay, so B air increased by 0.2. That happens almost every time with every watch. Amplitude did dip to 240, so a little bit low, but look at that rate. We got three, two, one, and now one. So that was the first four rounds. We're gonna do four more rounds. 236 amplitude, keeping steady at plus one on the fifth reading. Now the sixth reading looking to be zero. We do have a lot of snowflakes. It is zero. Well done. This watch is amazing. It's performing better than the Longines we just looked at, which was chronometer cost certified. Now we got zero, zero, and the final number, 
one. Okay, so zero seconds a day, dial up. One second a day, 12 down. This one is gonna run perfect on the wrist. Back to zero. Okay, here is the loom shot. Look at that beautiful dual loom. We've got the loom pip at 12 and on that minute hand being green. The rest, beautiful blue. Let's compare it with the reduce. I have it in my hand right there. And as you can see, old generation has stronger loom. And let me look around the camera and confirm, yes, it is stronger in real life. It's not just camera tricks. Okay, so the first gen definitely has its advantages. And I have a lot of subs telling me this. They actually prefer the older, larger watch. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with that. Here she is in the half lighting. What do you guys think of this watch? Vintage lineage, under $1,000. Excellent performance. The movement is unbelievable. And yeah, I can see why people prefer the old one over the new one. Which do you prefer? Let me know down in the comments. And is this your favorite MM200 of the last gen or even of both gens? And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.